What we're going to do in this lecture is expand on our basics of circles and we're going to talk about some new ideas that really exist only in circles. And the first one of those is going to be what you see on the screen here, which is a central angle. It's an angle whose vertex is the center of a circle. It's a, it's also, you can also look at it as a, uh, any angle formed by radii, the radii of a circle. So we've got formed by uh, radius AB and AC, and that is uh, still, uh, we still call it uh, angle BAC, or reverse it, but it's still, you have to make sure that the vertex is in the middle. Right? When you take a circle and you break it into a whole bunch of smaller parts, we have what are called arcs. And we've got two types. We've got a minor arc, and that is any section of the circle whose points are on the interior of the central angle. So the minor arc we can name here on this figure is minor arc BC. It's important to note when you name a minor arc, you only use two endpoints. So we would call this minor arc BC. And over the top of it, we're back to putting things over the top, we're going to put an arc. So that is minor arc BC. There's no distinction between any other type of arc So with, when the, with regard to the thing that goes over the top of it. So those letters are, are important. If you mean to name a minor arc, use the endpoints. And it's equal in measure to its central angle. I'll take this on this. So let's just, for the sake of ease, we're going to say that this central angle, BAC, is a 60 degree angle. This minor arc, BC, also is measured in angles and it's in degrees, and it's a 60 degree minor arc. You can measure it in both arc. Uh, uh, arc measure and arc length, and this is this is uh, a 60 degree minor arc. You can probably see where we're going with the other type of arc. Uh, if we have a minor arc, it stands to reason that the major arc is the section of the circle whose points are on the exterior of the central angle. Well, I'm just throwing a, a third point in here is because we can't name it yet. We can't name that major arc uh, that uh, is because we need three points and it's we use two endpoints and one in between. In this figure we have minor arc BC and it's 60 degrees. The major arc would be DBC with an arc over the top. Three, three letters indicates a major arc. The middle letter just has to be in between. You know, if you were to travel along from B along the circle to C, any other point that it passes through could be that middle value, could be that middle letter. So that's that's all, all that we need here. And the measure is the supplement of its central angle. So we've got a, uh, a supplement of, so measure of, what am I doing here? Measure, I'm trying to get my, my pen's not working here. There it is. Measure of major arc DBC is 360. Oh, not, I'm sorry, it's not the supplement. It wouldn't, wouldn't be the supplement. Uh, it's 360 minus, in this case, 60 or 300 degrees. So it's not the supplement. It's uh, it's it's the difference between the, uh, the measure of the central angle and 360. 360 is a full rotation, so the the you take away the central angle from that, and you have your your arc measure. Um, adjacent uh, adjacent points. Our adjacent arcs are arcs that are on the same circle that intersect at exactly one point. So if we were to name this one here, we've got uh, our minor arc PQ 
Minor arcs are also less than 180 degrees, by you know, generally speaking. Uh, and uh, minor arc, I don't know what I was going to do there, QR, are adjacent arcs because they share exactly one point in common. And when we're talking about, we haven't done, we've done segment addition, we've done angle addition, and now we can do arc addition uh, as well. So we have minor arc PQ plus minor arc QR equals minor arc PR. Because generally speaking, if it's a minor arc, it's going to be less than 180. Um, and this, is, this one would be um, less than 180. And once we have that, you can kind of, hopefully you can kind of see how these problems are going to start to present themselves. Uh, you, might get, uh, you, know, you might get statements for each of these and, and that, and then try to find what their actual lengths are with you know, a little bit of algebra. Uh, it's, we're, we're going back to that. We haven't done it for a little bit. We've, we've gone away from that, but we will be heading back to that. You'll get plenty of time to, to practice all this uh, in, in upcoming classes. Now, these next three ideas talk about the, uh, the relationship between central angles, arcs, and chords. And they all kind of one. They all kind of stem from from each other. So one will lead to the next, which will lead to the next, which will lead to the next, and kind of bring us back to where we started. So it all kind of makes sense in the beginning, yeah. You know, as as we see it, uh, you know, all the way through. Um, so the first one here is if you've got congruent central angles, they're going to determine congruent chords. And that's what we're showing here in this figure. We've got. Uh, we've got angle DEA, DAE being shown to be congruent to CAB. CAB. Now that means that these chords, if we create a chord from D to E and C to B like we have there, that means that, as, as it's marked, that D E, set chord D E is going to be congruent to chord C B. Imagine the central angles uh, being kind of hinged at the vertex, and the chords are the, the things that are holding those hinges open. If the angles are the same, the thing that's holding them open must be the same as well. So now we're going to go from our statement about the relationship between central angles and chords to chords and arcs. Here we're saying we've got two congruent chords. Chord BE is congruent to chord CD. Remember, we've got uh, from from the previous lecture that the chord is any segment that has its endpoints on the circle. If BE is congruent to CD, then minor arc BE has to be the same, has to be congruent to minor arc CD. We're probably seeing the pattern now. We now may con connected chords to arcs. Well, what's the only thing we haven't connected yet? Arcs determine congruent central angles. If you know that CB, minor arc CB, is congruent to minor arc DE, we can work that backwards and say that CAB has to be congruent to DAE. Now that kind of falls in line with what we were talking about before when we said that the angle measure, the central angle measure and the, the uh, minor arc uh, are congruent, have the same angle measure. Well, that kind of follows along there. Now, what these arcs 
Uh, these arcs are referred to as, sometimes referred to as, intercepted arcs. Imagine the uh, the angle kind of blasting out through uh, the uh, through the circle. The the arc that gets contained in that interior is the intercepted arc. So there is, and you can uh, hopefully you can you can see as we go from central angles to determining congruent chords, congruent chords determine congruent arcs, congruent arcs determine congruent central angles, and then we're back up to the beginning. So it kind of it kind of all follows along here, and it I I think it's pretty intuitive. I don't think it's all that complex, or, or it should hopefully hopefully make sense. When we're looking at at at, at this here, what we have here. Uh, we've got a couple things going on here. We've got a diameter AB and a chord CD. Now, the di diameter is a chord as well because its endpoints are on the seg uh, the, the segments endpoints are on the circle. But because it contains the center, because it's the largest chord, it is we get to call it the diameter. And what you notice here is when you have a chord like we do in CD that's intersected by either the a radius or um, you know, in a circle, if a radius or diameter is perpendicular to the chord, then it bisects both the chord and the arc. So if you've got something that's perpendicular, and that, that could be a radius or a diameter, then you've got something that you know to be uh, bisecting the chord and, and, the, and the arc. Likewise, if we flip that around, if you have a perpendicular bisector of a chord, it's going to be a radius or a diameter. Even if you're not told it's a radius or a diameter, but that's usually not something that is all that hard to figure out, to be honest. This, however, is where you might have to incorporate some trig in some of your problem solving. I said that at the beginning of this unit, we can't be completely forgetting about previously learned stuff like trig, like the Pythagorean theorem, like our triangle properties. This might be where we could get to a point of, of being uh, dealing with some of those things, some of those properties that extend beyond circles or were beyond, were happened uh, uh, before circles. So these are some additional properties, uh, some additional vocab, some new ideas in terms of, obviously we've dealt with angles, but we haven't dealt with central angles uh, and how they relate to the chords that they uh, intersect, the arcs that they intersect, and, and, and all that stuff here. There's some great problem solving uh, practice that you can do with this uh, that, that will hopefully help you apply uh, these these ideas and just remember this what we're trying to determine is how can we work this equal sign and how can we use the properties that i'm looking at here to set up some sort of solvable uh, algebra problem that we haven't done that in a little bit we haven't talked in those terms for a while but that's what we're doing here we're going back to that so if we know this what can we do please take some time to practice these let me know if you have any questions hope this helped helped